Hello, everybody, and welcome to preseason thunder of the Season 9 Enron Selling Years Orlando Cup Series here at Daytona. We had a bit of a crazy, crazy first session in the uh, off season that's going around. And of course, this is the final video possibly being uploaded in 2020. So we have 18 drivers that are here for this one, just like the first session. James Qualls, fastest in uh, the preseason Thunder session one. So let's get on down to the track and get someone who uh, was already out there. We start off with JT Bryant. JT going to be a driver that's going to be the one to keep it on for sure. Second slowest, however, in the Thunder session. Definitely did not have the speed going on. He, he ran with the with the fastest lap of a 46.165. Really wasn't doing a whole lot there in that FedEx Toyota, but he will definitely be one to keep an eye on this season for sure. Fan favorite, no doubt about it. So we shall see what happens to him in that FedEx 22. So let's see here. Zach Flickinger making his return to the series. Of course, the first session that he had, speed was rather okay for the time being. And then he pulled a fast one out of nowhere and finished third in the, in the first session. So that exalted Dodge going to be one of three drivers that will be fan favorites to try to win the Daytona 500. Actually, one of five favorites to win. Remember, him... Angel Navarro, James Qualls, and both of the S3 Motorsports cars of James Ellison and Kyle Matthews. See if they can get the job done. Remember, for S3 Motorsports, two of the drivers have won Daytona 500s back-to-back. -back. Jessica Shelton and Seth Cole. Let's see if Ellison and Matthews can be the next to do so. Sky Commons in the 17, his last uh, running in this. He was 15th fastest in that dodge now of course they're trying to get back into that dodge groove there remember when last season he drove into that chevrolet he did not get a win however he did have a good run in that season consistent somewhat and managed to do well with the set key funding there now out of the set key funding and into flickinger funding Eyes will definitely be on that 17 for sure to see if they will keep some momentum up in that number 17 car. Remember, Commons, fourth slowest altogether. Nathan Hudson in the 8, who was 11th fastest. So he was in the bottom 9 category. That 8 car was actually so, showing some pretty good speed, but then the draft laps really started to kick in, and that 8 car was just starting to lose momentum on the running order there. Now, the funny thing with Hudson is that him and Flickinger have raced for some time. And, of course, now that they're teammates for this season, you know, main question with Hudson is, you know, being away for a season, will he get some uh, momentum? Will he get some rust? We shall see what happens in that Exalta uh, Nintendo Switch Dodge there. Can't wait to see him when he's going to run those Nintendo Switch games. So I'm looking forward to see how that's going to go. Ainge Navarro in that 42. In that Rudy's Barbecue Toyota, she is definitely going to be one to uh, have eyes appeal on because she was the slowest in all of preseason Thunder of Session 1 here. Now remember, preseason Thunder for this season is only two sessions, so a lot could happen. Anything as goes, but Navarro, she got a lot in her plate here. Of course, coming back to the series, taking the 42, putting it as a Toyota... Now, there's one thing that you can easily say is that Archangel definitely has one of the stronger teams. They know how to win in their cars. Look in the last couple of years and all the drivers that managed to win in those machines. Just to name a few, Scott Roush, Jeff James, Angel Navarro, Amber Ross, Tim Fiegel, Eric Burton. You know, all those drivers I mentioned, they have won in those cars. Now, Navarro... Trying to see if they can get back into it. But you know deep down what they got their sights set on. We mentioned before with Flickinger. She really wants this 500 win bad. She's managed to win the other Triple Crown races of the Brickyard 400. Actually, funny enough how both um, Navarro and Ross, they both have actually won back-to-back -back Brickyard 400s, might I add. So that is something that's going to be uh, worth an eye to keep an eye on because that will be another racetrack that they have got their eyes set on. See if they can go for a three-peat. 
Maybe they can do it in their other team car there. Brett Pritchard in the 54. Second fastest last session. He had a really good car in that one there. Was drafting with Qualls throughout the majority of preseason Thunder of that session. Pritchard trying to at least get some redemption because for some apparent reason, I don't know what is with Pritchard in the undersell. He can always have that one good season and then after that it just goes down the drain. Eyes will be on the Bang Energy Toyota from I Racing Toyota. Be interesting to see what will happen. And not too far away are his teammates, starting with the captain, Connor Meyer, who in that first session was 12th on the board. Didn't really have a strong car altogether. Was just not really in a main pack there are, as he started around. But you know, right now he's going to get some draft lap help with the uh, help of John Ard. Now, John Ard is technically with the satellite team, still unnamed as of this moment. So... For Meyer, I know uh, they're going to make an announcement on that soon once the season begins and then everything will go from there. But as far as what happens to Art, he is also another driver to keep an eye because he managed to win at uh, Sean's Lise. Just really didn't have much after that. John R. very quiet. Bit of a rough season altogether. So we'll see what happens in that 0-5 machine. Hopefully something good. Speaking of Ember Ross, there she is. Ross 10th on the board last time we were here. Ross, if you remember correctly, in that 77, really managed to showcase what it was like to be out there in the field and just try to run through. Now, this is her third season in Cup. Yep, third season. A lot of eyes will definitely be on her, especially with what's in stake with this season and even... What well, comes to next season? Because remember, season 10 is coming up and after this season. And, you know, of course, you know, other than what happens this season, that will be a go big or go home situation. You know, Ross, we'll see what happens with her. She can prove that she deserves to stay in cup, let alone enter the cell action altogether. Teammates working together there. Jesse Turner in the 78 and Diego Yepes in the 59. We'll start with Turner. Turner actually uh, was six fastest in that first session there. Definitely had a really good car in that Aflac Mercedes there. And I'll tell you what, Mercedes has been on the run lately where they've been the main focal point trying to see what they could do. Now fully a part of Bishop Family Racing as they got it for both Xfinity and Cup. They should be a force to be reckoned with there for sure as a three-car stable. Turner, who won at Zinjoltis last season. He will definitely be one to keep an eye on. We'll talk about Yepes once he comes back out on the course, so we'll see what happens all together for him. But for Turner, keep an Aflac aboard and bring along a few sponsorships along the way. Allison Rain, right now the fastest. I know it's still early on, and we're almost 10 minutes into the session, but she had a really good car. In the first one, it was fifth fastest there when at the time it was a 45 4 4 5, which is good. But of course, you see that the laps weren't really kicking in yet. And you see Rain flying right by on Turner, and this is without the draft. So Rain's going to probably get some uh, momentum over here in just a bit. But that seat water here to Chevrolet. Going to see what will happen there for Evans Gardner Motorsports. I know for one thing for a fact with Rain is the fact that she's definitely going to be a driver that will host a new number. So for some reason, Evans Gardner likes to bring in all the new numbers in Enterson competition. I think they're watching my videos and checking in on the documentaries of like what number hasn't hasn't been used yet. So bravo. Thanks. Phil Parker in the 15, the last of the Meyer Racing Toyota cars there. When he was in that session, he was 13th. He was the slowest of the four of the My Racing Toyota camp in that Nationwide Toyota. Of course, Nationwide is only going to be used mainly for the preseason Thunder before moving over to Cheerios. Parker had mentioned, too, the fact that that 15 team really is wanting to show they are not a one-trick pony. They're just made for regular season decoration. And that when they come to the playoffs, they don't choke. So we'll see what happens with Parker. Hopefully, uh, we prove some doubters wrong for sure. But this will be an eye on for sure in his third season in Cup. K 
Kev Shearer in the 68 right now. Fourth fastest on the board. A good sign right there. Uh, Kev, as I'm looking through here, was ninth fastest in the first session a couple months ago. Right now, fourth. Showing actually a faster lap time now than was before. And he's going to get, an, they're going to get an extra driver with RJ Bishop as Flickinger is leading the way there. So we'll see what happens with Kev. Of course, moving over from the double zero who took a win at open roads. So that season was a great win altogether. See what happens at 68 team. And there's your champion, James Qualls in the 70. Still hard enough to believe you could put the words James Qualls and champion together. It doesn't feel like it there, but. That 70 team is going to be uh, one to watch, hands down, in that all-white 70 there right now. Six fastest on the board. Still, uh, actually, he is actually running a faster lap now than he was uh, in the first session. Because the fastest lap that he ran in the first one was a 45-3-3-0. And right now, his best lap is a 45-1-7-3. So the speeds have definitely increased. We're going to put the ticker up right now. And uh, we'll see what happens at Qualls. Right now, Rain still out in front with a 44.915, just the fastest overall in the session. Wow, that car's cruising. RJ Bishop, who definitely has had a very rough 2020 altogether. It has not been the year of RJ Bishop. And we documented about Turner uh, having a good season last season, making the chase. His other teammate, Yep, is the same. Bishop, unfortunately, was the one that definitely faulted altogether and definitely didn't get any momentum altogether so you know that 98 team is looking for the redemptive factor uh heading into season nine so we shall see what happens coming along the way in that gear wrench mercedes there speaking of yepes there he is just a spot behind him in 11 uh i forgot to mention too about rj he was fourth fastest in that first session there yepes was actually the fifth slowest there that nos mercedes there definitely didn't have a lot of energy out there not really showing it and now here he is, all by his lonesome there, so that's really not going to help out his case on jumping up on the boards there. I think they're just trying to get the performance in, just trying to let the gears flow and, you know, get the feel of the car in. So when they get ready for the 500, you know they're going to go all out there. And keep in mind, too, he's also one of those drivers battling out for the Spectrum Cup Series title as of doing this recording, so, oh boy. JT Bryant in that 22. We already mentioned about it here. Right now, sixth on the board, I believe. Oh, yep. Quit more than 89. In that Chevrolet. He's moving up to allow Sky Comms to come on down. Giving the hand signal that he's coming down. And quit more in that 89. Definitely a rough going in that machine there. Kind of involved in a lot of wrecks that really weren't his fault. At the session, though, he did get some progress he was eighth fastest on the board so at least some good momentum there right now second slowest with the slowest right now being skycom still not able to hit in the 45s and stuck in that 46 forward but a rough going all together for more he's looking for a redemptive factor there for sure and now these guys are gonna freight train around the 89 is navarro art and hudson Scott Roush, look out. So 89 throws a block. There he is in the 60. Now he's the only driver from the Finn Guy Pastrami camp that is a part of the session altogether. Now when I did talk to Roush after that first session, who was third slowest there, you know, he just said he just wanted to get the feel of the car again, try to make sure it gets back into that rhythm. So that way when they take that green flag for sure, you already know they were ready for this 500 hands down. Now, the funny thing is when he last drove in the Daytona 500, the year that Shelton won it, Roush actually finished in the top five. I believe he actually finished third that race. So it was uh, Shelton at the time, Johnny Gardner, Scott Roush, and Keith Batson. That was the top four. They were all together when that happened. It was a wild, chaotic race and uh, very interesting nonetheless there. Roush, uh, big time improvement right now. Of course, uh, his speed's a lot faster and... He is up the board a little bit there. He was last score again, the first session he was third slowest. Now, right now, 14th. He jumped up a couple spots as Nathan Hudson has cracked the top of the board as four drivers have hit the 44 mark. Quinn Moore now making a presence here as a seven-car pack is here. That's almost half the cars 
in the session that are all together here. Man, Hudson and Art, I think they're going to really get some laps here. Well, Maze JT Bryant hasn't really got some momentum there in that 22. And one driver come down pit road. That's Art in the, or not Art, I'm sorry, Brett Pritchard in the 54. But Hudson, you see it there, folks, a 44-873. That's a lap right there. Wow, flying by even with the draft. Now we have documented on everyone here. Of course, because, you know, that's just how it is. It's not really a big field, but mainly some drivers just trying to get in the back of the field of the cars there. Now, we mentioned about that six-car pack earlier. There's a three-car pack with R.J. Bishop, Kev Shear, and Zach Flickinger. Remember, Navarro was the slowest in the first session. Let's see if uh, we can find her. As There she is again. As more is coming down pit road. There she is. Right now, some major improvements with that 42. I think you already knew that you know, when that first run came around, you know, of course, you know, Navarro, just like Flickinger, just trying to get the rhythm back. Navarro definitely did not have it in the first session. Um, Zach Flickinger did in that first session there, and, and somewhat for Nathan Hudson. Hudson, I can tell you, he's back, and, you know, the main competition that he has in story, rock enough, is the car behind him. Have a little bit of a rivalry there, and, uh, I guarantee you that will be a fun battle to watch there. Hudson versus Navarro. Now, what sucks is that there's no short track, so Hudson is not able to uh, battle for his uh, uh, win that he had back in Iowa a couple seasons ago. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. There's a short track, and that's uh, Bristol Dirt. However, if you've noticed, like I said, you know, Iowa's not back. Bristol Dirt taking over in the chase, so... That's going to be a wild race. I can't wait for that. That will be a fun race to watch. James Qualls, Sky Commons. Commons finally hitting the 45 mark. Still slow, so with the 45-421. So he is gaining the ground up of... Kev Shear and Diego Yepes, as they are approaching somewhat, R.J. Bishop, Zach Flickinger, and Connor Meyer. All we do, we're just looking around, Quentin Moore leaving Pitt Road, as these five continue to draft with each other. I can guarantee you, you know, just drafting each other is really going to try to be a benefactor there, but Hudson cracking the 44-8. No one else has come any close there, so that's a good sign for Hudson. So it shows you the Dodges are... Really starting to make a presence here. And that's good news if your name's Zach Rogers, who's not in this session. But remember, he was the only Dodge in the field for the last couple of seasons. Once Sega Keep made the move to Chevrolet, Flickinger Racing moved out of the Dodges, and then they returned to the Dodges. So, Moore actually may get reeled in by these cars. I actually may bunch them up here because Qualls is trying to reel in Sky Commons. And it looks like Moore is going to be up to speed somewhat. Unless these guys get held up a little bit here. And, ooh, Quentin Moore has a bit of an aggressive block there. And that allows Sky Commons to catch up. And who actually is the fastest who just sniped Nathan Hudson. He was trying to reel in the pack. And, I mean, he just sniped the A-car. It's another Dodge that has cracked the top of the board. Well, the Dodges have now been playing around here, and they're now making a presence. Oh, my. Commons went from dead last to first in a snap of a finger, and oh, my. You can see Qualls in the 70s trying to reel in the pack. He's actually going about the same speed, but... You already know he wants that draft. Meyer should definitely get some uh, momentum there. No, still not faster. Well, he's kind of still in that bit of a sucker hole spot, which, you know, if you're in the outside line and you're really, like, in the traffic with dirty air, it's really not helping your case out there in that Mobile One Toyota. Holy Toledo. Where the heck did Comets come from in that lap? 
Folks, a 44-811, and only seven cars have hit that 44 mark. Two of them, or actually three of them, rather, in the 44 eights. That is absolutely incredible to watch there. We're just keeping an eye on this pack here, because this could probably mean that we may see some changes on the board. 45-340, Myers still slower. He actually only gained literally one thousandth of a second coming up on the board. Nine drivers now in the 44-9. And we actually have a tie for fourth between Kev Shear and Jesse Turner. <laughs> A car 68 and 78. That is absolutely impressive. Qualls moving up. I think someone. I thought someone was coming down pit road. Qualls has got some momentum. Oh, I think he's going to get a, a shredding time up here. Let's see if he can get it. 45-0-1-6. He jumped the 10th. He's flying. Oh, RJ. Oh, Qualls just had to let off a little bit right there. And you just seen that, folks. Yikes. We're going to quickly take a break over there and look up ahead. These guys are forming a five-car train. And leading them down is Allison Rain. And he's got Phil Parker, who jumped up to second, keep in mind. Wow, that 15 has been making some progress there. They've been doing work on that nationwide Toyota. Somehow Ember Ross not really gained some momentum there. Meyer coming down pit road in that 51. Jumped up uh, a little bit there. Shredding the time, but not really gaining a whole lot of momentum. And now Quentin Moore, for whatever reason, wanting to make it three wide there. Walls now 44, 9, 2, 7. We got 10 cars now in the 44. Make it in the 44 mark. Flickinger ran a 45 flat. That's awesome. That's incredible to see. We're seeing drivers starting to snipe some times. Remember when Qualls took that top position, no one came close to that time, mainly due to the fact that no one could really get that speed. Now the cars are getting their speed back, and look at that there. They're getting that momentum to show that they're getting the feel of the car again. As you're riding with Qualls right now. Common's still the top driver as of this uh, moment. That is absolutely bonkers with Flickinger there. A 45 flat. Still, uh, like, the slowest of 45, 2, 6, 7. Everyone else has been running 45 uh, zeros there, so... I don't know why Meyer got out of the groove there. I think probably just to get some tires and uh, get some fuel there in the 51, or at least get some data, too. Man, look at these guys. That's a 7-car brigade. They had an 8-car brigade earlier. That is absolutely insane. Cars moving up. I think some drivers coming down. Quentin Moore being one of them. Kev Shear being the other. The Evans Gardner duo. And this will probably kill some momentum right here off this pack. 44 9 last time by for Commons. So now it's two five car packs. Actually, make a three five car packs. Wow, and the others are all down pit road. That's unbelievable. I've never seen that before. Having three five-car packs of an 18-car field. Meyer trying to join these guys. That's not going to be the case. He may join Rain and this company here. As Rain uh, jumped to seven with the 44-899, and Barras has sniped the spot with the 44-798 in car 77. Wow, where's the 77? I think I passed. Oh, there she is. Wow, where did the world this come from? Oh, oh, that is unbelievable. Pritchard in the top 10. Well, folks, you're seeing some changes now. I mean, we are seeing some snipers coming around. And we're getting closer to five minutes remaining in the session. This has been entertaining to watch, man, because... Just when you think it's over. See if Meyer, if he can get reeled in by uh, a pack here. Hopefully it will be this pack right here. Oops. Or I'm sorry. Um, this pack right here. Because he's getting reeled in by Rain. 
and a few others. Now, it may take a lap or two to get the draft going if they actually let the 51 be a part of this group. Oh, man, that's the second time someone's done that there, and that's a very risky move. I know that slowed the momentum, and Rain probably not going to be too happy with that one, but now that they have a six-car brigade, this may help out for sure. Now, if I were Meyer, I would let the 78 go around you and get that three wide out of the way. That way, when you're in the rear of the field, you get the lives and... and Oh my goodness gracious, look who just jumped up as I have been hardly paying attention. Scott Roush, Nathan Hudson, John Art, JT Bryant, and Angel Navarro out of nowhere has sniped the top spot with the 44-7-1-2. Oh man, people are just throwing snipers on the course. Wow, I am just blown away. <laughs> Rain now coming down pit road. Now this may help Meyer right here if no one goes around him, which uh, right as I say that, that's out the door. Holy Toledo. It's a, it's a fiesta over here of just sniping top position after top position, and Navarro is ahead by 1-1,000 one, one over the 22, which they're actually, well, they were together. Now the 22's down pit road. Holy cow, where is this coming from? This may be the last big pack of the session. And what do you know? Three of the drivers that are in this main pack here are Meyer Racing Toyota. Let's see if Meyer can shred that time at that 45.267. No, it barely did anything there. Remember, he's the only one that's not even in the 45 zeros there. And he's the only one of three. To not hit the 44.9. Trying to use the outside momentum off turn one and two, which you can actually get with this Daytona version that's here. Wow, he's getting some really good momentum right here. Getting also the draft of Phil Parker. Remember Ross literally shoving the 51 up there. Now let's see if Meyer. Oh, making an indication coming out pit road. I think that may have. Slowed up the 51 a little bit right there. Turner also coming down pit road. So let's see what Meyer's going to get. Because I think this may be it for Meyer's uh, opportunities to at least kill, shred his time. 45-501. Yeah, if he stayed on for just another lap. Man, that probably would have been a really good lap right there. Wow, what a crazy session. Moore's now topped it with a 44-643. What? <laughs> And look who was drafted with him. It was the 42. Oh my goodness gracious. Now Moore just sniped him. Moore just, or Moore just sniped Navarro. She, he, he sniped her. I, I'm sorry, folks. I don't care what I'm even saying anymore. I, I am just, I'm out of breath. I'm shocked. I mean, look at between second through fourth. He's separated by four one thousandths of a second. Unreal. Unreal. I swear, Navarro finds a way to overthrow the 89 here, but uh, never mind, that's out the door. We got about another minute remaining, and I, I, again, I'm just, I'm in disbelief. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I just, I don't know what to say, so we got about another minute remaining. Myers getting some drafting help from the 77 of Ross, and I don't know if this is going to be a whole lot here. Going to try. Yeah, he's really not going to get a lot gained right there. So once the once that timer is going to expire, they're going to finish the lap that they're on. So we know for a fact Kev Shearer is going to get at least one more lap. These guys should be able to get at least one more lap. And these guys have been entertaining there and... Uh, you know, you got to give them some credit. Yeah, they definitely will right here, hands down. Uh, Turner, I know it probably won't be a whole lot there because he's just came back out on the course, but anything could happen. Nope, not going to be enough time. So that main pack is going to be the final uh, decision there. 
So eyes will be on this pack right here. Quit more, folks. Out of nowhere. First James Qualls the champion. And now quit more. I don't even know where to begin here. I, I really don't even know. Speaking of uh, James Qualls, him and Kev Shear, really not going to be a whole lot much of a worry. They're across the line. They finished their lap 47s on their end. And I don't think with the way how they're battling, they're, anything's going to really change. Navarro's going to try one last effort to see if she could do it. Nope, 45, 3, 4, 6. But there you have it, folks. Quinn Moore, fastest in second session of preseason Thunder. Wow. I am just in disbelief. I really am. What a crazy session this was. Only three drivers were in the 45s at that time. Everyone else, 44 onward. So now, as you look here, the biggest movers for sure, no doubt about it, Angel Navarro, hands down, went from last to second. That's impressive right there. Uh, Quit more, another gain there. There gained uh, seven spots. Biggest loser was Zach Flickinger. Definitely took a drop, no doubt about it. JT Bryant also big gain for him. He was second slowest. Scott Roush also with a gain. Hudson with a small gain. Ember Ross a small gain as well. Sky Comets a good gain right there. Uh, Jesse Turner, just a bit of a small loss. Nothing too bad there. And Phil Parker had a decent gain. Allison Rain took a good drop right there in the 66. Pritchard definitely took a drop. Qualls definitely took a drop. Yepes uh, actually was the same. 14 fastest. Both sessions. RJ Bishop, he was definitely slower in this one. Well, not by... Well, his timing was not slower, but... You know, result-wise, and Meyer also took a drop as well. Well, guys, that'll do it here at Daytona for the second and final edition of Preseason Thunder. If you've noticed on Discord, we'll be back in action in January, where we will have Daytona Speed Weeks, where we have Daytona 500 Pull Day, that'll go on by. And then we will have the Budweiser Shootout as well, Gatorade Duels. And then the main event, which will be Arca, Xfinity, and Cup. Until then, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys also on a crazy 2020 year altogether. We will see you guys later in 2021 for NRSL action. Until then, this is your boy DeYoung signing off. We'll probably see you guys, hopefully, for Outback Xfinity reveal uh, later on as well as I'm doing this video. I hope uh, it'll be done. We'll see. Until then, goodbye, everybody. And we'll see you guys later.